What up, everybody? Everybody, what's up, everybody? In, in, in. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the What's Up, Everybody podcast here with my co-host, Sweet T, in the house, a.k.a. Tony Thompson, a.k.a. Tony the Tiger. Do you have any other nicknames? TNT, Dynamite, Rico Suave, and... Uh, the most mysterious man in the world. Sexiest man alive. <laughs> How you doing, dude? Good, good. Great night last night. Bro, somebody copped a new vehicle this I weekend. I did. Great day yesterday. Yeah, Golly. I did. Holy. Wow. We've already done so much today. I, I feel like yesterday was such a long way away. Like, it happened yesterday? I feel like you've had that truck for at least a week now. Yeah. Basically. I'm loving it. Loving the truck life. Destined to be a in the truck game for sure. Yeah, Tony. Let, let, me, let, me, let me take you guys through Tony's car. History. He's just jealous. Real fast, okay? But I was born last, and I'm obviously the favorite because right. I'm the baby. Number one, Tony's very first car he's ever had was uh, back when it was all hype. Before this car, even, you even saw it on the road, Tony got it, was a Mitsubishi Evo 8. Four-cylinder, turbocharged. Evolution 8, yeah. And this thing was sick. All-wheel Red. drive. I mean, considered it a... Six speed. I think it was, was bomb. Yeah. Tony, you like upgraded. It wasn't that a bomb. Point. It was cool. It was cool. But it wasn't a bomb. It wasn't a bomb, but it was bomb. I don't know what that means. It was bomb. Like it was awesome. Oh, is that what the children are saying nowadays? No, no. What children are saying no, that was like that was bomb. That was what late nineties people were saying that? It was bomb. That was bomb, dude. That was the I'm bomb. I'm sure they weren't saying it in the late 90s. If I, you know yes, I mean. they were. 100%. You guys my age out there, y'all know. Now what are they saying? <laughs> bro, you're in the 80s, cuz. No, it was not 80. Well, that was the bomb, bro. No, that was 90s. Yeah, it was the bomb, not it was bomb. Well, same thing. It doesn't matter. So he gets an Evo, it very does. first car. Red. Right? Red, sick. We used to go to all the car meets and stuff with it because Tony was, had, the, had all the new hotness out there with that vehicle. Everybody loved it. It and had then, the AMS. AMS full exhaust. Straight pipe from engine to, to tailpipe, AMS front mount intercooler, uh, HKS super sequential blow off valve, <laughs> AMS hard pipe intake. Which he AMS. paid nothing for. I paid for all of it. No, dude. I, yeah, out of dad's credit card because y'all have the same name. See, you're literally making things up right but now. You really bought all that? Yes, I bought all that. 100% bought all that. It's not what I remember. Mom, you don't remember anything, mom, dude. Thought mom bought all that for you. Dude. No. Anyway, agree to disagree. Um, no. Then the guy gets a. How long did you have that car? I got approximately all his pretty much. one year. He had that car one year. I ended up taking it. Right. Yeah. I ended up blowing the engine in, in my my car. So Steven I even had two cars. Blew the engine in both of them. I did. The engine about no one, it was a transmission. Oh, the other, bro, one was, okay, we'll go have your car dilemma, mister. Coming at me, at least I took care of my vehicles. <laughs> I got cars because I wanted new cars, not because I had to get new cars because I blew them <laughs> up. So, anyways, continue. All right. So, then he gets a when these when uh, a new Lexus, it was a Lexus 350 IS, uh, IS 350, 350, the year they dropped, bro. The, yeah, I'm they in were high school rolling in, bro, blacked, blacked out. Sepia leather interior, bro. Heated cool seats. Push to start. Like when that first came out, I mean. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> so then this this dude graduates. I had that car a minute though. I had that yeah, car had from about junior year to senior year. We still, I still see it around. <laughs> I still see it around. The whole Jenna, our, our, our uh, no, no, no. I cousin. had it. I had it until yeah, junior year. Until freshman year of college, like midway through freshman year of college. Tony gets a high school graduation present. He gets the I the Lexus ISF. Not graduation present. Are you sure it wasn't? I a got graduation? it like mid college. Oh really? Yeah. Okay, but anyway. Two door, four hundred and four hundred and five horsepower. It was bad. It was V8. V8. Yeah, Lexus ISF. Like the OG Lexus ISF. 
No, because Silver, I remember driving it to blue some of your accents. games. Yeah. Because I, I was driving it then. I only had it for like a year in college. Okay, so that's right. I, I got your yeah, I got your hand me down uh, Evo. I could have swore I heard something back <laughs> I didn't know what it was. And then uh, I got then I got rid of that and then I got your ISF. Well, I guess you were still in college because I was driving back and forth. Then this dude graduates college. No. Junior bro. Bro, okay. If I don't you're know. gonna tell the story, Sorry. tell the story. Sorry. Go for it. Go for it. What'd you get? When'd you get it? Uh so I had the ISF freshman year till about junior year of college. Okay. And then that's when I ended up uh getting the full scholarship. And as mm. a full scholarship present, um so this was my this this was my true junior year, but my red shirt sophomore year in football. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. What'd you get? Which means I was a junior, but I still had like two more, two more seasons, three more seasons. Anyways, I got a Nissan GTR. Yeah, he gets an Evo, IS, I, uh, Alexis, IS350, Alexis, ISF. And then a Nissan GTR. And then GTR. a Nissan GTR. He had that for a minute. He, you, you actually I had recently, the GTR for, for I, it was a, I for got a it in 2012 and I just sold it. Last oh, I year. Wish, I wish you didn't sell it. I wish you didn't sell that thing. It was sitting in the garage yeah. doing nothing. And you got getting taxed and insurance and I don't ever ride it. I got kids you can't fit a car seat in the back of that bad boy. No, no, you did get a, 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 a I was it a, what'd you get? You, then you got an SUV for a, for a second, for a second. And then you got rid of it. Was it a BMW you had for like a second? Yeah, I yeah, did. You had I did that? have the BMW, but then I, I immediately got rid of that for what? Yeah. Do that. yeah, you had it for a second. You didn't like it, took it back. That's when you got the ISF, right? No. Okay. No, you got the Jeep. Yeah. No, I, before the Jeep, you had a you had a Tahoe. Yeah, dude. I, I had, <laughs> so we had, we, we're, I had we, an SRT Jeep. I had a BMW, which was the worst of all the vehicles yeah. that I could ever have had. It never worked. He had a Tahoe had a, just to transport what was it? your what, dog the back BMW, and forth. BMW Boss. X5 yeah. or something like that. It was X5. It, it was, was terrible. terrible. I hated it, bro. I got rid of that bad boy in like six months. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. And I had a freaking Hellcat, <laughs> Hellcat. Charger when you they had, first came out. He had a GTR, and his daily was a Hellcat. Charger. No, dude, I got the Jeep Mad Lake because I got the Jeep when I was dating Colleen. When I first started oh, dating that's right. her, we like started dating that day that we were down in Georgia. I went and got that with you. I went and got that with you. Yeah, that was so fun. that was 2014. So that yeah. was that was out after college. I had the Jeep. Yeah. yeah, and then mom t mom drove that, and then she just got herself a sweet ride, sweet ride, mm -hmm. and then you rocked. The Tahoe. No, then you no, got. No, I got a Mazda. Then you got a bro. Mazda. I got a Mazda. I love that Mazda CX nine. That yeah. thing was smooth. It was. It drove nice. Got a little kick to it too. Sunroof. It was smooth. I mean, the it tech was, was all it had the, nice. The heads up display. Yeah, I, I, I took yeah. that as well. You had that after for a bit. I took your ISF, and that was kind of the last hand me down from there. That's how I always got my new vehicles. Because Steven was always a bound to blow one of his up. <laughs> so I would just give him my old ones and, and I'll just, just get new cop ones. A new, new ride. So we, we worked as a team. That's right. He had the Evo, the ISL. I helped. I helped you he get that the, stuff. Though. So look, Mazda. mom, I need a vehicle because I just wanted you to get a GTR, bro. Let me take this and then give, yep. get him a GTR. And I've got, man, I went back to AMS Performance. Shout out AMS Performance. They hooked me up with their Alpha Seven, seven. package, which gave it 700 horses to the wheels. Dude. That thing was bad. It sounded so good. It was, man, but it was like a hundred and eighty bucks for an oil change, and I'm like, ah. <laughs> brakes, brakes were getting old, <laughs> tires were getting old. It was about to be just stupid. So yeah, got had to get rid of it. <clears throat> yeah. Now, now, Tony was rocking the the. I gave you back Tahoe, the Tahoe, but which I, we've had since 2000. We got that in 2000 and. and uh, 13 13 so that thing was falling apart yeah. falling apart now tony you know rocking the the 
the Tahoe and the the white minivan now because you got youngins. Yeah, I got my truck now. Now I got the got truck, truck yesterday, and and we got the minivan, which is I swore I would never get, but you it's, got the Raptor. It's amazing, amazing minivan. Ford Raptor. What was what's, what's the horsepower of that thing? It's the 2014. It's got 411 horsepower, but it's a 6.2 liter V8. What's now the gas they price? make <laughs> the Raptors. Now they make the Raptors with the turbo V6. I heard they're coming back out with the V8. Yeah. Um, if you're gonna go, go hard. Go with the V8. Yeah, dude. Gotta go with the little. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, turbo turbo V6s. You know they belong in Nissan 350, 370s, GTRs, yeah. not the trucks, bro. So I mean, what's next? You gonna put exhaust on this thing? That's the plan. All right, cool. I'm about I to want say. exhaust intake. You know, I want to be able to hear that V8. Get that, get that muffler. Get that muffler off that bad boy. Um, yeah, it's just straight pipe all the way back. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know about that because I don't want to have to deal with like having to tune it because I don't want oh. the check engine light on because of the O2 sensor, all that stuff. So I might just go. <laughs> just chill. I just want to hear the, the V8. Open yeah. it up a little it bit. It looks good, though. It yeah. looks good. Thanks, it looks man. good. It was kind of between that and what, the T Rex? Never, never. The T Rex was never considered because <laughs> no, it's he just talks a about little it. bit pricey. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was trying to talk dad into getting a, the TRX while we were down there. It. Mom's starting to talk me into getting it, getting one, getting a truck or something. Get rid yeah, of it. dude, get rid of that dumb G wagon. I love the G wagon. No one loves the G wagon. I love the G wagon. The only people that love G wagons are the people looking at the G wagon from the outside, <laughs> not the people in it being like, "Dude, this was a terrible decision." Why was it a terrible decision? I love it's the, the most ride. unaerodynamic vehicle on planet Earth. True, gas mileage ridiculous. It is a. It's literally Twin it's turbo a, it's V8. The, the tightest. Uh, Zero room. I don't have kids. SUV. Yeah. If you're looking for space, planet, definitely not the right vehicle for you. It's a twin turbo V8, so you tell me the gas price, bro. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. And it's German. Trying to get that American made. Got to get that U.S. made, baby. Yeah. yeah. Come on. I'm just taking huh? the emblem off and putting a slap of Ford emblem on that thing. You know, a little Ford. I don't know. I love it. But still, trade that bad boy in on a TRX. TRX would be. Sick. I don't think you can handle a TRX. You can't. You legally horses. aren't allowed to drive a TRX unless you have a beard, which. I mean, I can grow a scruff. I can grow a scruff. I mean, do a little scruff. I can't prove it. Prove it. That's right. But anyway. Um, Glad you got the But uh, let's go over your car situation. You want to call me out on my cars? <laughs> I had the crappiest cars ever. But you got what you wanted still. I did. You started off with a Dodge Stealth. Dude, Dodge Stealth was. Dude, I remember rolling up in, in Hillcrest High School Park. At Dodge Stealth was the off brand of the Mitsubishi <laughs> 3000, 3000 GT. GT. Uh, so if you it didn't was want literally, that, you had to get the Dodge Stealth. It was a 3000 GT. That's what it was. It would look just like one. But you had, not, so you had one Dodge Stealth, and you're like, you know what? I love this car so much. I want a second one. So wow. he got another Dodge Stealth, which was actually the 3000 GT. Well, they engine, had right? they had a non-turbo and they had the twin turbo. Both of them did. So I wanted something a little faster. I like the I like the Stealth look because it was there wasn't anything really like that between. I mean, just the, it was basically the same car, but I got the twin turbo version. And literally after two weeks of having it, doing a little street racing on the side, end up. Hitting a uh, a curb and just messing my wheels up, dude. <laughs> like, like my back wheel was just kind of tucked in, and so it wobbled, blah 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 blah. It wobbled every time you drove it. It was terrible. Dang, oh, I know, man. man. It was bad. I'm like, why? And then what'd you get after the stealth? Did you immediately go into the RX-8s? Yeah. I, so I got an RX-8. You had an RX-8. Well, when they first came out, they you were really actually wanted an really RX-7. cool. I wanted an RX-7. But I couldn't find any around here. Didn't you almost get one? But it was like I really did. expensive. Or it was something. no. It was it was just uh, I didn't trust the mileage on it. There was something sketchy about it, which I should have got because a buddy of mine ended up getting that car and just turning it into a monster. But uh, and there wasn't a, at the time there wasn't a whole lot of guys around here that worked on rotary engines, uh, modifying them and stuff. So I went out went for the RX-8, which was supposed to be kind of rivaled the RX-7. It was supposed to be kind of par with that at the time. And then, of course, we found out real quick it was just crap. You yeah, know what I mean? it was weird. I it got one. It always smelled nice, but it was weird. Had that little, had like a two door, but had like a third door that opened. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. Because it, it was like literally door. not a back seat. Yeah. You, had to, you had to lay down the back seat. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I remember trying to get you in that that bad boy, dude. We would drive, we scoot around that thing left and right. Yeah, we did. But, I learned uh, how to drive stick in it. It was the weirdest clutch. It was ever. weird. I didn't learn how to drive stick in it. I actually learned how to drive stick in Megan's Jeep, but mm-hmm. the clutch in that thing was so weird. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it redlined like ten thousand RPMs, but it had like one hundred twenty horsepower. Yeah, <laughs> it was dude. terrible. It was terrible. Because and they were supposed to come out with a ton of modifications for it, which they never did at the time. Never did. Yeah. So I was disappointed. So I ended up blowing the engine in that. So I blew that. Got your, got your. Uh, and then from then it was just hand me downs. Hand me downs. I got your, your Evo. ISF. And then I got your ISF. I went from the ISF to Toyota Supra RIP. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I traded that straight up for the to the Toyota Supra, and then. Don't even get a start on the Supra. Don't, don't even get yeah. That's a podcast in and of itself. Hundred percent. That that was kind of like Evans. It was a '93 was, Toyota Supra. 90, yeah, it was '93 Toyota Supra. And it was that we could we could go all day about that, but it was literally on on par with Evans' wild Indonesia story. It was wild. It was yeah, a whole dude. story on its own. But I mean, I'm it, still. It, but but at least Evans' Indonesia story concluded. Yeah, at least it happened. I still haven't <clears> seen my Supra, so I know where it's at. It's in pieces, with a bunch of modifications sure, on a pallet. Bro. So, tr- just trying to find somebody to put it together. Mm. You guys out there listening? If you want to put a Supra together. Uh, hit me up. Mm-hmm. Hit well, you up. were you were gonna you were gonna work with B is for Build his YouTube channel. He's yeah. got a cool channel, but obviously yeah. he's running his own channel and doing doing his yeah. own thing. And uh, B is for Build. I actually met him. How I found out the whole situation with my Supra. You know, I hadn't seen my Supra in like three years, right? Because it was they were kept. It was in Georgia. Uh, a thing. Uh, a company called Speed for Sale. And um, from what I was hearing from them was I had a middleman aka my sister shout out to my sister Megan and she was kind of going back and forth I I was training for camps and stuff like that so she was kind of handling all that for me but uh everything was dandy until I met Beast for Build in Disneyland at Star Wars Cantina (laughs) I see this guy to our right looking at it looking at me and he's looking at his phone he's like Wonder Boy look what's up man how you doing and he's like bro you know I was telling about our YouTube channel he's like bro I got one too I was like for real he said, yes, B is for Bill. I'm like, bro, you are B is for Bill? I didn't recognize him. And he was like, yeah, man, dude. And he was a big you know, big MMA fan and stuff like that. And I told him where my car was. I have a Supra. He was working on a Supra. And he told me that B is for Bill went bankrupt. No, Speed for Sale. Uh, excuse me, not B is for Bill. Speed for Sale went bankrupt. No idea. No clue. They didn't tell me nothing. And lo and behold, they were getting ready to auction all my the modifications. Whole bankruptcy thing, bro. Man. You and they were going to go bankrupt auction and like you're. You get a slap on the wrist, mark mm-hmm. on your record, but you get clear of like all your debts, bro. Hundred percent. You got to pay nobody back, so everybody you. Yeah. So I paid. I paid. That that was my problem. I paid everything straight up, which I should. Well, kind of. You went kind of halvesies and halvesies though. I did. Though. Like they I, asked for more, and you're like, all right, all right, send it, and then they just didn't. Yeah. So I had a ton of. I mean, brand new motor. 76 millimeter turbo, all internals, new transmission, brakes all the way around. I mean, it was going to be a freaking new car. It was going to be, I mean, potentially, hopefully still it'll be awesome. But um, it was sitting on the pallet. They were getting ready to auction my stuff off when I found out. When BS for, Thank you, BS for Bill. You Shout out to you, bro. It. Go check his channel out if you're all about cars, bro. This guy's awesome. Whenever you get it, we're going to have to do a video in and of itself on just you and that whole story and yeah just me just hugging this thing Dude, just holding on to it crazy but he told me about it they ended up they ended up getting it out of there it's at a new spot location right now and disclosed disclosed location I'm not gonna throw it out there but b is for build was was talking about wanting to build it on his channel but i know he's doing his own thing gotta get in touch with him by the way and see what's up so but go check his channel out guys it's pretty dope so i had the supra and then you Drove wanna, the Tahoe for a, around for a while, yeah. Uh, and then I traded you. I, I traded you the Tahoe for the for the Mazda. Yeah. And and then what? And then the and Mazda. Then you traded the Mazda in on the G wagon. On the G wagon. And then you bought the uh, Audi R8, R8, which is sitting in your garage. That's right. Just farting around. Yeah, dude. Trade that bad boy in on a T-Rex. You trade Might that be. in on a T-Rex, bro. Maybe. 
It's a, I like it's the Audi, Audi R8, what, 2012 GT? Yeah, it's a, it's a GT. So they only made 300 of those things. Pretty cool. But uh, I love it. All white. Y'all got you got, y'all probably seen it. But yeah, we we like cars. I like to blow Big up car cars. stuff. Yeah. yeah I, like to, I like to blow up cars. Blow up engines up, bro. Mm-hmm. I think mom is a low key, just savage when it comes to cars. She tries to get the, she's got what well, she got a Jag right now, SR yeah, SVR, dude. yeah, Jaguar SVR with that white. I forget what they call it, like their special paint. It's like a white, but it's like a pearl white. It literally looks like a pearl, like pearl gray. Yeah, it, it's it look like they it's matted. Like a special it's matted. paint for it. Yeah, I forgot what it was called. They only make the paint in like a few different colors. Yeah, but it's sick. Yeah, thing is quick. But yeah, dude, it's 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 we're definitely car fanatics. But I, I suggest you guys go shout out to my man B is for Bill. Say hey, man, hey, get in touch with Wonder Boy. <laughs> let's get, <laughs> let's get this down. I mean, we got his number, but you know I know he's busy. I don't like to bother him. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyways, um, thanks for bringing up my car history. You're welcome. If you guys don't know, I have the force. I just forced <laughs> grab this drink here. <laughs> But yeah, we could go on for days with everybody's car issues in our family. We all had cars. Evan had cars. Evan had the worst luck with his cars. Again, another story, another time. Oh my gosh. Evan had a 300 he, ZX. Remember that? It blew up on the side of the road. Dude, I remember that. And then it got broken into overnight. Everything. Tires gone. It was sitting on blocks. In that was It was the fastest in and out job. It blew up <laughs> that night. We met to get up that morning. Everything was gone. Gone. The indoor door panels were gone. Everything was gone. It dude. was gutted. It was awesome. Nuts. That was so funny, man. Nuts. Oh, my gosh. Speaking of gone, Sarah gone, gone. UFC fighter, UFC fights last night, 273, segue into the fights, WB, go. All right, guys. Starting off, we were we went live for the main card. But, I mean, we can go so back and So, if you want to see our live reaction, you can head over to that live video. It's go three hours it. long, but you can kind of jump around and see where we're at. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, go ahead. So, I mean – Great, great night of fights. I, I wish Was it really. A I great mean, night of fights. I mean, it it drag drug on. I didn't get home last night till almost three a.m. East Coast gets no love Guys. in the fight world. Golly. it was Bruh. late. It was in Jacksonville, so you know they were freaking tired. They were fighting while we were sleeping. Why? Why not do it earlier? Because they got to account for the casinos and all the yeah. stuff back in Vague. I know, dude. It was it was wild, but I was I was exhausted. We were like this towards the end, and in every fight, surprisingly enough, except for the last one, went in the distance. Yeah, every one of them. Yeah, I mean, there were some. There, there were, were good fights. They were. But there were some upsets too. Oh man, it was, it was just like kind of drug out a little bit. I was like, golly, let there be a knockout. I want a knockout. Somebody, please. I mean, it we just went the distance most of the time, but. Uh, it was fun. You had the uh, the the new Irishman, one seventy. Ian Gary. Did some work. Ian Gary. What are your thoughts about him? You got to watch the fight. Good striker. He had some good feints. Uh, switching sides. He's definitely a, he's definitely a good, very good striker. Uh, good prospect for sure coming up. He's young. He's like twenty two, maybe twenty one, twenty two, something, something like that. Something. But uh, tall. He's a tall one seventy. I think he's like six three. Uh, we we have. I think it might have a longer reach than him. I don't know, but. Uh, um, I like watching him fight. Impressed, and the guy's only going to get better. So I like watching him fight. That was a great fight to watch. Also, the old man came back with a submission of his own. The old, Olenek, bro. That's right. That was like Scarf his 170th fight last night. Yeah, he got his back taken. He's 24. Years. Switched it up. End up taking his opponent's back and finish him with a rear naked. No, it was with the. Um, the old headlock um, scarf, scarf, yeah, scarf choke. That looks painful. I've had that done to me. Chris has done that to me before. You cannot get out. Can't get out. Somebody hooks you up with that. Ridiculous. It. it, it He's got but, a crazy, crazy reach too. So and strength. A lot of leverage. Strength. Yeah, that's like he he has like forty something submission wins. So you know he has the strength to just squeeze the crap out of you, literally crap out of you. I love watching guys like that at that age. You know, I'm not saying he's old old, but he's what 45, 46. He comes in with a scruffy gray beard, like something you see out of an anime, and just and just beat him, just beat that yeah. guy. I was thinking about this earlier. It's almost like, and I don't mean any disrespect, mm -hmm. but it's like being strictly a BJJ guy. 
It would that that would have to be the toughest the toughest art to be your skill set um if you're coming into MMA, right? Like there's only like one BJJ guy who really was able to stick to primarily BJJ and beat everybody, right? Damian Maya. Yeah, Damian that I can Maya. think of. And I'm I'm sure you guys are gonna be like, nah, dude, back in 1983, uh, you know, blah blah blah. But that was when you did have different. You you did have, you know, different. You had specialists then, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And now but, you're not. But my my point is is, BJJ is it's hard to start off with being you know strictly a BJJ practitioner because if the fight never goes to the ground then you're kind of a fish out of water, yeah, yeah. right? And that was kind of Damian Maya's issue there towards the end. Yeah. But it comes back kind of full circle, and if you want to have, like, a long, long career, you need to be really good at BJJ because yeah. once the fight does go to the ground, you can minimize the damage and keep it down there and win, you know, like Olenek, like Glover Teixeira. Um, but, you know, it's just awesome to be able to see him at his age still use his BJJ. Yeah. He does get pieced up quite a bit. Yeah, so on the stand up for sure. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't see him being. I mean, he's, I don't know what he's ranked right now, but he's got me in the top ten, maybe. I don't know. He was but for a minute, but he's, he's making, lost a few. Yeah, I don't see him making to the top. But the guy came out of there with minimal damage, so good for him, man. Yeah. And at his age, he doesn't need to be taking that crazy damage. Yeah, especially with his last fight. And the guy that he fought was a stud, wrestling stud. Ended up taking mm -hmm. him down, taking his back, but he did good, kept his cool. That's where that. You know, however many fights, 60 something fights. 70. 70 fights came in, just kept us cool. Um, but that was a great fight. Very impressed with that. Um, and then you had who started off the main card? Pichelle and Madsen. That's right. Pichelle it, and it Madsen. It was originally supposed to be Rosenstruck. Um, he was supposed to be fighting Marcin Tibera, but Tibera had an illness, couldn't compete, so they scratched that card. Madsen and Pichelle, they're lightweights. They bumped up to the main card. Uh, I was kind of, ex I, was, I was impressed. It was, it was an exciting fight. It was I like that scrappy, fight. Yeah, scrappy, scrappy fight. fight. Uh, Pichelle, I mean Madden, Madsen ended up uh, going up with the W, but it was it was a good fight. Um, and then after that, we had um, who was it? It was a female fight, I think, right? Who was it, Sweetie? You know? Tisha Torres and Mackenzie Dern. This guy. I thought Torres won it. I thought Torres won it. I thought Torres won too. Um, I just thought she moved, hit in and out, sidekicks of a knee was working, um, but I thought it was a good. Thought it was a good one. Good fight for sure. Uh, Dern kept her cool. She kept pressure. I think that's what wins fights. I mean, if you looked at if you look it's at weird, that this man. this fight card, it was the type of judges that if you were walking forward, you were pretty much going to win the fight. It doesn't make sense in, in some regards. It's very similar to, um, like, when when Shevchenko fought Amanda Nunes. She was backing up a lot, but she was landing the shots. Yeah, That doesn't just nullify Shevchenko's, you know, shots because Amanda Nunes was moving forward the whole time, mm -hmm. right? And it just seemed like, yeah, Dern, she was moving forward, she was throwing, but – Tisha Torres was landing. She was hitting combos. She was in and out. She was working the sidekick. She she did good defending grappling exchanges. But the thing was, like like uh, Dern didn't get a takedown in. She pulled guard. Yeah. She jumped guard. Mm -hmm. I mean, she had some uh, 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 crazy uh, Kimura attempt, which I thought T Tisha Torres' arm was going to just blow off. The Kimura, then she oh almost got the knee bar. Yeah. But she def she defended all of it. Yep. So who wins that? Yeah. Who wins that exchange? People will say, oh, well, obviously the person going for it. It's like, well, I mean, you can say that, but the person that defended it, obviously they stopped it. Mm -hmm. So it should be a clean, like, just because they Draw. go for something mm -hmm. doesn't mean they win. If I throw 100 strikes at you and I miss, and you miss every single one of them, right? but you're the one throwing strikes and I'm not, you win. You didn't hit me. Yeah. You know what I mean? It should right. be just like nil, nothing, zero. Well, at least you tried. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna commend you for your effort. Yeah. So I don't see how that if now if she shot him for a double leg, held her in side control for a little bit, then go for a submission, I could see that. But she jumped guard. Yeah. Like I feel I don't know, Jeff. If you jump guard and then 
I don't know, I think I feel like the other guy should get a point for a takedown. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? End up on top. I don't know. But I thought Torres won that fight. I thought it it was Yeah. And then shout out to Mackenzie Dern's husband, man. He was more excited oh, than she he was. He was crying up there. Was, yeah, he was. Let's go. He was freaking out. I wish we were able to listen to it because we weren't, you know, we had it obviously for copyright purposes. We couldn't have the volume up, but I wondered if she was speaking Portuguese or not. No, I don't think so. No, not this time? Nope. I think she's, people, people, uh, she knows people are on to her. Yeah. So she's like, all right, you got me. I got to go back to my, my regular accent now. <laughs> But in Mackenzie Dern's husband defense, I know that when you finally get that adrenaline dump and the person you're cheering for most mm -hmm. wins and that pressure is off, is dude. off. And you don't like, care ah. who's watching or what you're doing. You're just yep. going nuts. Yeah. Like I'm ready to fight at that moment in time. If people try to like get on me, it's not a good trait. <laughs> but if people are like, Hey man, sit down. I'm like, what? shut up. That's my brother. You know, I'm going to get ready to fight. Do people like do that to you when I'm fighting? No, not really. Most of the time they're like, oh, you're Wonder Boy's brother. Woo. And then we become best friends. And like, <laughs> yeah, dude. That was back when you would win a lot. But, um, you know, it's, I know where, I know where he's at. <laughs> Thanks, brother. And, uh, back when we were allowed to go to fights and you won a I, lot. I know. The good old I days. I know. I wish you didn't have. I mean, well, I love that you have kids, but get a babysitter, bro. Bring them with Bruh, you. Bring the bad boys with you. It's not about not going to fights because I got kids. It was mainly because of COVID. Well, my last few fights you could have. Um. Oh, except for yeah. no, not my last. Not my last one because that was the only one we could have gone to was Burns. Gilbert Burns. Right, and that would have been boring as crap. Because you were at the Apex and then you fight Gilbert and then you're back at the Apex. Yeah. After fighting at Apex and you're like, oh, it's pretty cool, man. I don't like that. But then you go back to like with the crowd there. It's like ah. I don't want to go back to Apex anymore. I know. It's just like. The crowd's like, Whoa. yelling, man, yeah. crowd. I was like, what's up to Trump? He was in the crowd. <laughs> yeah, that was fun stuff. But uh, after that, okay, so we had Torres. We had uh, Dern. Then we had Gilbert Burns and Shemaev. Looking at that fight afterwards, you kind of, you kind of, you see the mortality of Hamzat. Like, you looked mm -hmm. at him before, I was like, this dude's unstoppable. That's what he's everybody in, was he's saying, He's impossible man. to beat. He's never been punched. He's been punched twice his entire UFC career. And Gilbert, I mean, it, I mean, you got Hamzat. He beat a top five guy, you know? He beat him, but it was close. But you saw, you saw him bleed. Yeah. You saw him bleed. He did very good. Uh, I was more impressed with Gilbert, to be honest with you, with all the hype around Hamzat. Defended the takedown. Right that, was, that was huge. That yeah. set the tone early, in my opinion. Yeah. The fact that Gilbert defended that shot. I mean, Hamzat, beautifully timed shot, got in there deep, couldn't finish it. Mm -hmm. That was a, an immediate sign of like, he was like, okay, this guy is stronger than I had anticipated. Because, you know, he's been Gilbert's calling him strong, small dude. all week. Yeah. He's a little guy. You're a little guy. Da, 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 da. You know, I'm going to smash everybody. And then Gilbert immediately defends his initial shot. He was like, oh, crap. Now we got to stand up and, and, and fight. Both knocked each other down in the fight. Awesome. I think they got a performance or fight of the night or something like that. Fight of the night. But 50 G or 60 Gs. Was it 50 or 60? I don't know. Um, I think it was 50. But um, they ended up getting that. Who fights Hamzat next? I think people are saying Colby Covington. Uh, mm -hmm. If not Colby, who fights him? I don't know. Who fights him? So um, I think people are. I think the UFC is going to definitely get. If if it's not, I think Leon's going to fight for the. Uh, well, obviously Leon's going to fight for the title. If Connor doesn't yeah. fight for it, it's going to be Leon. Yeah. Do you hear that? I don't know. I hear something. It sounds weird. <laughs> sounds like something going on back there. No. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So Leon maybe. I don't know because Colby's right there, right? So yeah. Colby's kind of like he's not going to fight for a third time. What dude. do you do with him, Colby? Yeah, you fight Hamzat. He can't immediately fight one fight and then go back to the belt again. He's nope. he lost twice. Or the winner of Vicente Luque Bala Muhammad fight fight um, Hamzat. Yeah, but if Vicente Luque wins, he needs to fight for the belt. Right. Yeah, if he beats Muhammad, then he doesn't need to fight Hamzat. He needs okay. to go straight to the belt. Hamzat fights Colby. Yeah, but then if Colby beats Hamzat, then what's Colby going to fight for the is, belt again? No. True. Like, what do you do with Colby? That's what I'm saying. 
Just get him out of there, dude. <laughs> Colby needs to fight the losers of these fights. Yeah, losers. Until he can fight a, you know what I mean? Right. Top contender. Where He'll he fight ra- the loser of Vicente. And- is he ranked number two right now? And Leon's number one? No, I think he's number one. Still? Golly, what do you do? He just cleans house with everybody. I mean, he has to fight for the title again. Yeah, he's gonna, but he's going to have to clean house there. Right. He's going to have to fight Gilbert. He's going to have to fight Hamza. He's going to have to fight... Bilal or Luke, he's going to have to fight Leon. What needs to happen is Leon has got to beat Kamara for stuff to just change. Yeah. You know? Kamara has to beat. Best case scenario for Colby, Kamara, uh, Kamara gets dethroned. Yeah. For Colby. Not saying that in terms of like, oh, Colby can never beat Kamara. I mean, just like, just so that people can, uh, other people can have cycle shots through. at the title. Cycle through. Colby's got to. Yeah. Kamara's got to lose. Yeah. But I was impressed with both guys this weekend. Uh, now, uh, now l- let me let me let me ask you this: yeah. Who do you think that the talk, the hype around Hamzat affected most, Gilbert or Hamzat himself? And the reason I ask that is because everybody is talking about Gilbert, you know, and I, I was he had to sift through all of like literally everybody's talking him up to be invincible. Yeah, this dude's invincible. You got Darren Till. You got Alexander Gustafson. You you got. Everybody in the world, all of the media, everybody. This dude's tough. This dude's tough. And now they were giving Gilbert credit, but everything you heard was how uh, this dude. Everything was on smash. social media, every outlet everything. was just Hamza, 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 and Darren too. Um, everything. But then on the flip side of that, Hamza's hearing that too. He's seeing that. Obviously, he's exploding. He's believing in it. That I mean, That's obviously, I mean. for for I think it was more pressure on Gilbert, I and mean, you saw it when they were going out of the cage. Hamza was just sitting there, sitting on top of the cage. But Hamza, at the end of the fight, said that pressure was on him to finish the fight early. That's why he got tired. I don't know then. It looked like, from the looks of it, it looked like it was Gilbert. He looked like, all right. I mean, but he always looks like that. He was always ready. Like, he's focused, you know? Yeah. Um, the preparation that he went through to fight this guy. I mean, his training camp looked ridiculous. The cardio, everything that he went through. But he ended up getting tired. Now, both of those guys were tired. If Hamzat fights Colby, who is a cardio machine, five rounds, how is that going to turn out? Again, back to Gilbert before the fight, he was like, I'd rather fight Hamzat now than in two years. Yes. Because the more fights Hamzat has like this, the the better he's going to get. 100%. Because he's going to learn how to pace himself. He's going to learn how to be more efficient, how to be more technical, how to – just clean his game up. He's 27 years old. He's he's had 10 fights, you know, five fights in the UFC. But now is where he's really going to start to – you learn more in your losses than you do mm-hmm. your wins. I agree. And he didn't lose, but him fighting to a decision was, was not a loss, but it was – he has so much to learn from that Gilbert fight yeah. in terms of his striking, his movement, how to, how to just, maintain his just, gas tank. Just uh, uh, fight time. Just get out fight there and fight time. Win all three rounds instead of finishing this dude in the first. Yeah. And it was the first time that we've seen Hamzat back up. When I started to see him back up, I'm like, what? You know, yeah. you know, Gilbert the, Burns the is first walking he, forward. He, yeah, the first time he looked fatigued. Like, he was like kind of like, First time oh, I've crap. seen him get knocked down. I think ever anybody's seen him get knocked down. He got mm-hmm. knocked down with a nice right or I think it was a right hook. Just a clean, just in tight. Boop. Yeah, and that was a good block and counter for, off of uh, uh, Burns. But I think, you know, it was it was smart on Hamzat not to go for the takedown, but just to keep just to stay long because Gilbert had a had a problem in the third round getting past his long jab, mm-hmm. his long his reach. So he was still Again, that was he learning. adapted. Yeah, he adapted through there, which is which shows um, he's able to adapt out there in the middle of a fight. It shows experience. So he is going to get better. He is going to get better, which is scary. Do you think this fight hurt Hamzat or no, helped him? Helped him in terms of like his demeanor his his aura i think it helped him his he mindset. knows that he went third round beat a top five guy uh the, way, the way fans look at him oh i don't think so i don't think he's that type of guy i don't think he's that type of he didn't have that mindset no no no. i mean like the fans perception oh. of hamza do you think they that has affected them negatively? i think fighters i think out of fighters yeah fighters looking at him in the weight class like this dude's bleeding yeah like, okay now now i can kind of see some holes here yeah. Right before you had nothing to go off of. Yeah, I mean you, he, you, he you had everybody. his fights outside of the UFC where a little little exchanges happened. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and it's not to take credit away from those fights, but they were still really early in his career. Yeah, so you didn't really look at him as like that important yet. Yeah, you, yeah, you still exactly, and and he was still learning, and it's hard to, it's hard to, you know, see somebody super early on in their career and really be able to be like, okay, well that's how he's gonna do things all the time because yeah. he's obviously evolving and stuff. Yeah. But so for now, I think guys in the division are now they see they can go off of something, you know. Yeah, okay. they can kind of learn. Um, let him okay they're, they're, this is from the mindset of obviously he's going to learn from it but they're thinking okay if i can withstand that first barrage this first takedown defense in the first round you know i can kind of pace myself I, or not really pace myself but if i can get past that i got a chance right mm -hmm. like if i can defend the takedown if i can keep Humzat on his heels because he didn't do well backing up yeah um i got a shot there right and only going up from there for Hamzad, he's going to be facing way better wrestlers than yeah. Gilbert Burns. So, I know. Um, that thing that was, I think that helped him a lot. But in fans, I think they're going to see, okay, all right. And, and not just fans, but fighters in that same weight class see, now they got something to go off of. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think from a fan's perspective, I think it helped him. Yeah. I was thinking about this earlier. It's like when you have somebody who's go for it. so dominant. And this goes for anybody eventually. It's like the New England Patriots or even it, now the Kansas City Chiefs. Teams who just always win, it's like you just you gradually start to root against them over time because it's like <clears throat> they're, not, they're not that relatable, right? Hamzat was not really relatable because he was just so dominant. So everybody kind of had that. Not everybody, but it was almost like he's an awesome fighter. He, you know, he, he does really good things, but now – He's more relatable because yeah. they're like he can see he goes. He through handled the adversity. Yeah, he 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 showed his heart. He showed mm -hmm. his grit. He so now they can connect to him more. Like all right, he's human. He's like me, and he fought through it. Kind of like you did with Woodley. Yeah, in y'all's fight, you had you got so much respect after that. He's human. He's he's hittable, but um. He dug, he dug deep. He continued. He didn't quit. He didn't give up. And it kind of gives them that more of a relational vibe yeah. to him. And I like that. I like to see that in fighters. And I got to see that in both of those guys this weekend. So a lot more respect after watching both of those guys go after, especially Hamza, because, you know, he never saw it. Yeah. And, and how he to Gilbert, it. too, man. Yeah. It was great. I was impressed. I'm glad they got fight of the night. Yeah. Both, both respect to those guys. Um, for sure. Co-main event, Al Jermaine, Peter Yan. Again, another fight. People weren't really seeing it go that way. Everybody was kind yeah, of picking. Yeah, I didn't see it going that way either. Picking Peter Yan to get the finish, go out there and do his thing. But I saw where Dana said he had it 3-2 the other way. For Yan? Yeah. Yeah, I can see that too. First, third, and fourth. I mean, first, fourth, and fifth for Yan. Yeah. Um, the, the, the first round – Jan looked really emotional. He did. Uh, you know, he wasn't as crisp as he has been. He looked like he was really fighting with a lot of emotion, trying to get him out early. I that first round. I know. It was close, and we haven't rewatched it. Definitely have to, to take a peek at it again. But um, Because I was watching it like this. I know, dude. It was rough. The one I was, like, tired. Was but then, then Al Jermaine obviously had those those two back takes in rounds, in rounds two and three. That should have been, like, a 10-8. It could have been. You know, like especially round two, because he had him in there like the whole, mm -hmm. the whole thing in the way that they hand out ten eights, right? Like, so you know, I haven't again, I haven't watched the fight back, but it was definitely close. I was glad it was to still see, a split decision. It was, right? yeah. I was glad to see Al Jermaine get the title, man. I mean, we've I've known the guy for years now, just being a Long Island guy, training at Long MMA. Yeah, you saw the Godfather, you know Ray Longo in his corner, which was awesome. Chris Wyman was out there with uh, supporting him, so I was glad to see him. I was glad to see him get the W. So what's next for Aljamain? Do they do it again a third they time? Fight a third time. I mean, I think so. Did he call T.J. Dillashaw? Or T.J. Dillashaw called him out or oh, something? Oh yeah, like that? Dillashaw. Dillashaw's yeah. there. I think I think Aljamain takes that. I do too, hundred percent. I think Dillashaw's kind of. It's tough to come back from what he, you know he did. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not going to get into all of it, but I think Aljo takes that fight. Yeah. Especially after the, the Sanhagen fight was super close with Dillashaw. 
I mean, you give Jan two more fights and he just dominates. They got it. They go. He's gonna shoot him back up there. Yeah, but who does he fight next? He beat Sanhagen. He, he beat Sanhagen. You know, Marab's there too. D- Devashvili. Um. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know what's next for those guys. You have to throw John Sweeney in there. Yeah. Hollywood. Sweeney <laughs> Hollywood, right, right to the title. Right to the title. Right Let's to go Hollywood. But it was good to see him finally win. Yeah. It, it sucks it wasn't more decisive, right? Because yeah. that's what he's just looking for, like that. But it was top. It was five. You're right, dude. Yeah, I was just seeing this color right here. Now you're good. Five. It was five, five in rounds. Five. And his cardio looked good. Yeah. Um, you know, it was, that was an issue, his first fight. He was wearing yeah. himself out right off the bat. But his cardio looked good. I thought he, his control on the ground was 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 awesome. That's what won him the fight. But um, I, I thought Algermain had it. But it was it was very close fight. Yeah. Um, then main event, poor zombie. It poor that was zombie. that was a one sided fight. Man. Oh my gosh, Volkanovski. It's probably because they were fighting so late, so fast, <laughs> so crisp. Yeah. He was explosive. His offensive defense were just. I don't think he got touched. I know, dude. And he made Zombie look so slow. Yeah. Didn't he? He was in and zombie out. Zombie didn't he was fading look back. right. He looked no. like a zombie out there. He didn't look like the. He had just he had, he his combos were a few big swings. Yeah. Like swing swing, miss them all, and then the way Volkanovski was able to fade back, and he was just right back in with his strikes. Oh, he never Clean. let Zombie just throw without any sort of repercussions. Yeah, the leg kicks too. I mean, I was constantly off balance and throwing he them threw, off. He would throw like a like a like a left hook and then finish it. Like that hook would bring the leg kick through and yeah. smoke the leg. Dude, he looked really good. He's talking about going up to lightweight. All right. Fighting Michael Chandler's of the world and Justin Gaethje's. I mean, I think he could do great up there. I think so too. Who's the 55 champ? Lightweight champ? Uh, Oliveira. I mean, um, yeah, yeah, yeah Oliveira. Oliveira. Oliveira's tall. That would be that, that would, would be, be a good fight. I would like to see Oliveira and Max Holloway. I think that would yeah. be good. I think Max would do good up there. I mean, well, obviously he got to be like Dustin. Dustin but. Yeah. And you know, Volkanovski and Dust. I mean, Volkanovski and Max. That was close, right? Yeah. And you saw what Dustin did to Max. So those are the big boys up there. I mean, they say Dustin walks around over 200 pounds. I know Volkanovski used to walk around there, but that was at his biggest he's ever been in his entire life. So, I mean, he ain't walking around that, you know. And when you're facing somebody like that who cuts that much weight and they bulk, they bulk back up, that weight had, you know, there's a difference there. So um, I think I mean, you can win some you? fights up there. I think, uh, go, hey, you're a title man. Go up there and fight for the title. So you try and go for that champ champ. Yeah. So who do come out of retirement and fight him? Yeah, so who, He looks like he's about 145 right now. So who do? Yeah, he's 245. Yeah, about 245. <laughs> but good fights, man. It definitely went longer than what I thought because I was so exhausted. But we got done around almost 2 o'clock, it felt like. Mm-hmm. But it was good. It was. I was glad to, to see some of these guys win. It's good to see the Humzop fight. It was good to see Al Jermaine get the title. And I just felt really bad for Zombie. I went yeah. home and cried about it. I was like, bro, he I'm did. so sorry. He cried himself to sleep. I know it. But great night. Great night of fights. Great night. I appreciate you guys tuning yes. in and hanging out with us. Um, I think this weekend, it's either this weekend or next, is the Bilal Vicente Luque fight. <sighs> Got to talk about that one. Fought both dudes. You did. Fought both. That's, 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 that's for another podcast. Unless it's happening this weekend. Is it happening this weekend? Let's check see. it out. Check, check, check it out. Check, check, check it out. Check, check, check it out. That is this weekend. Ooh. I think we should talk about it. Not so right now. But, oh, yeah. real quick, real yeah, quick. Real okay. quick. Picks. Luke All right, they fought Muhammad. each other before. This is second. I think uh, Vicente Luque ended up knocking him out their he last fight. Early. Uh, early, in early. UFC 205, undercard. Oh, snap. That's yeah. right. Dak on. It was like 2016. Yeah, UFC 205 undercard. Six years ago. Mm-hmm. Holy cow. Both obviously have made tremendous improvements. They What's going to make this a great fight is the fact that um, Vicente Luque doesn't mind going to the ground. He submitted. Luque is more well-rounded he than is. he gets credit for. He I don't know why. Stand and why bang. did he? He does like it. I guess he would rather. I mean, when we fought. It makes for amazing fights, and I'm happy he does. Yeah, we got fight of the night. Fan. We got yeah. fight of the night for that. And but, for uh, your sake. Huh? I'm happy he does for as a fan yeah. and for your sake. Yeah. yeah. 
Hit it but he's it. not a big wrestler. He doesn't he doesn't shoot a lot. Uh, but if he gets taken out, like his 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 defensive wrestling is very good. Mm -hmm. His defensive jujitsu is very good. So you try and shoot on him, he's locking something up. He's getting around that neck. Mm -hmm. He's loved Darces. Uh, loves he anacondas. Looks like he's strong. Yeah. Um, so that could play a big part. Now, what I think Bilal is going to do is, I think he's going to do what he what he what he did with me. Just I, hands in your face. Hands in my face. Wrestling. Pressure. Shoot. 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 Uh, but the thing is, this is going to be, was ours five fives? No, you were co-man, so y'all was three okay. threes. Uh, but, he's, but he's got five five-minute rounds to do so. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so he, he doesn't have, he, he, he's not known to have power, Bilal. So his big thing is just going to be getting the takedown. Yeah. I mean, he was hitting me with everything he got in the back, of, uh, in, in, the, in the head. It wasn't, wasn't effective. He, his, I think his strength is more to this. Yeah. Like his punching power strength, I don't think is quite there. Not like Vicente's. Yeah. Vicente, man, he's got power everywhere. Chad he's been hooks, knocking dudes out. Right hand, elbows. his left hook was was most important. It was his most. His, I think that's what he knocked him out with was a check hook. Yeah, if I can recall. Yeah. So, I don't know if it was a check, but it was definitely. I think it was like a duck. Boom! Dude, one of them just straight across the face. It's going to be an exciting fight. I know that. I hope it goes. I don't. I don't know if it goes all five. I think it, I feel if, like if, if it goes all five, Bilal wins. Wins. It, if not, but it's going to be a knockout. Win by yeah, knockout. Yeah, it's going to be. Uh, I fought both guys. Vicente is very intelligent out there. Um, his reflexes are good. He stays low, which is going to be harder for the takedown. They're pretty much the same size yeah. uh, when it comes to height. So I think maybe a little bit more shorter. difficult for to to take Vicente down. It's going to be a little more difficult to get Vicente down. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. That's another one. Yeah. Crazy, man. I don't have a pick yet. I'll have to make that. Yeah. I'll have to sit there and think about it for a second. One second. Okay. I got Vicente Luque. Yeah. Sounds I got good. Vicente. What about you? I'm I'm pulling for the striker. Yeah. There's too many wrestlers at the top right now. <laughs> let's mix Man. in some strikers, bro. Dude, let's go. The whole, like the top 15 of the U of the UFC World Twitch division. Wrestlers. Dude, grapplers and wrestlers. It's the most stacked division, it's, but it's besides, also. Besides you, Luke K, mm -hmm. Masvidal, Ponzinibbio, and. Um, Jeff Neal. Jeff Neal. And then that um, Muhammad. What was it? Muslim, Muslim, Muslim Muhammad or, or yeah. something like that. I forgot his name. Muslim, Muslim Salikov. Yeah, Salikov. Salikov. He's like a, a Russian. But and you've beaten Masvidal, Luke, Jeff Neal, and uh, you. So you, um, uh, yeah, you've beaten three of them. Yeah. Ponzinibbio's and, fighting. They just uh, locked in Ponzinibbio versus. Who was that? Dude, another striker it? guy. Another, is is he like Mongolian? No, I know who you're talking about. Okay, it's not him. No, 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 dude. I saw it and I was like, ooh, that's a big one. Um, who is it, Sweet Tea? Oh, let me look it up. Uh, it is. Come on, big boy. Oh, freaking Michelle pa Pajeda. Oh, the Pajeda. Flip, the backflip guy. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. That's going to be Dang, fun. Dang, dude. That's going to yeah. be fun. UFC 275, yeah. I think. Pajeda. That's going to be a fun one. Yeah. But, yeah. And Colby, Usman, Hamzat. Bilal. Bilal. Oh, yeah, Leon. Leon's a striker. Obviously, you haven't fought Leon. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. Um, Sean Brady, Kiesa. Neil Magny. Neil Magny. Uh, um, I think that's everybody in like the top ten. Yeah. So like nine, eight of them are, are wrestlers, like known for their wrestling anyway. Let's see. No, I don't want news. Gilbert. Come on, internet. Is it not working, Tony? Come no. Come on, internet. Might as well get Magni, Hamzat, Nate Diaz. He's still in there. No Is way. it? Nah, dude. He ain't. He ain't going to fight with the UFC. Yeah, no. Yeah, that was about it. Yep. Bo Yao. Well, yeah, dude. 
Good stuff. Great night of fights. Yep. Fights coming up. All that good stuff. International Fight Week. Hopefully we can get out there. Oh, let's everybody. go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. International Fight Week. That'd be sick. Meet, meet up with you guys. Appreciate you guys. Hit y'all later. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on all notifications so you guys know when our next upload is. We love you. Thanks for everything. Peace.